Vaya Cantillos, amigo. What's that mean? Go with God. You're listening to The Rock God Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Rock God Podcast, the only podcast that talks to rock and heavy metal musicians and artists about their thoughts or opinions about God. I'm your host, David Locklear, the owner and head writer at heavy-vinyl.com. So it's been a little while since we've actually had an episode come up. With all the pandemic stuff, I kind of figured that I would actually have a glut of episodes to put out there, but... Weirdly enough, life kept on getting in the way, and I actually got a new job that has required a lot of my time, so it's been kind of hard to maintain the podcast. But we are back. It's probably going to be a little more irregular for the rest of the probably year, I would say, in getting podcasts out there and getting episodes up. But we'll still be doing it, so just because it's not on the regular doesn't mean they won't be happening. So please just keep a watch and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a prompt when we do put up a new episode. So for today's episode, we're going to be talking to Atomic Bitchwax drummer Bob Pantella about their new album, Scorpio. For more than 20 years, Atomic Bitchwax have been the torchbearers for the stoner rock sound, with nine albums of 70s-tinged hair-on-your-balls rock since 1999. Some of the lyrics and the energy in the band's catalog visit themes of astrology, as evidenced by their newest album moniker, Scorpio. However, as I talked with Bob about these themes, it turns out that even it seems like there might be an elusive meaning, sometimes things are just exactly as they appear.
Hey, is this Bob? Hey. Yeah, this is it. This is me. Is this Dave? Yes, it is. How you doing, man? Good. How's it going? Doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. We've got a little bit of rain happening down on my end. What about you? Oh, it's beautiful out here. Where, where are you? I'm in North Carolina. Oh, yeah. It's coming up this way. Oh, okay. Yeah, that is it's probably from that hurricane that was uh, just passing through, isn't it? Yeah, that's what's coming this way. Passing yeah. You. Coming up here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, my in-laws are down in Florida. They've uh, got everything. They're, they've got their heads hunkered down. They're they're basically uh, trying to ride the storm out. So far, so good, though. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be super bad. It's like they said tops. It'll be 75 miles an hour. Yeah. Wind. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be Katrina levels of worry. So yeah. No way. Nope. <laughs> well, cool, man. Well, I appreciate you talking to me for a few minutes. Uh, I uh, You guys have... The new album, mm-hmm. Scorpio, coming out, uh, was it August 17th? Is that right? I believe it's August 30th. Oh, the 30th. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, well, I could be wrong. I mean, you know, things change. Well, and the thing is, is that I get dates mixed up constantly whenever I'm actually, you know, doing interviews with people, and it can become okay. a hodgepodge of ideas in my head, and so I might even mm-hmm. ask you if, uh, you know, James Hetfield is a nice guy in person, and, you know, <laughs> completely get it messed up. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, well, tell me about the record. Uh, how did it come about? Well, I mean, it came about, it was just time to do a new record, you know. We usually do one, I don't know, every two years. We try to do two, two and a half, sometimes three years. But, uh, you know, by the time the process gets, it's about two years and we start the process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, and every time we do it, you know, we record somewhere different. We always try different, uh, different approaches, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but as, as far as, uh, the writing and all that go, we, you know, we usually do it all together and, you know, we just lock ourselves in a room and just start playing riffs. Hey, I got this riff, man. Check this out. You know, oh, my, all right, let's add this to it. Let's do it four times, you know, shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. And now, to, is that how the local to, fuzz came about? I mean, that was what a one full track of nothing but riffs. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> We were pretty high at the time. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And then we played that live. If, well, we played, if, you know, if it was a, on a vinyl, we played side A live because uh, that was as much memory as we could hold in our head. It, it, you know, it was like 50 riffs. <laughs> was, yeah, see, uh, I've always found that admirable whenever some a band is able to to pull off that kind of long, long track because, you know, for me, I, I would lose track about three minutes in and, and I would be yeah, like, was, okay, I hope I'm doing it right. Yeah. I'm pretty surprised. And then it kind of just took on a life of its own playing it live. You know, you like, you didn't even think about it. It's very strange. It's a different part of your memory. You know, mm-hmm. it's like remembering a, a, you know, a poem or a, or the lyrics to a song, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah, it, it, it kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, all those legendary stories about Sleep's uh, Jerusalem. Yeah, exactly. Just, right. <laughs> just getting high yep. in a room and, all right, let's play a riff. <laughs> yeah, it, you know. So the new album came along, you know, it was very uh, organic, like as it usually is with us, you know. Mm-hmm. Not all, not 100% of the time. Sometimes, you know, Chris will come in with a, I got this riff, you know, I got a verse and a chorus, you know, and then we'll, he'll use like a drum machine or something, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, or or loops from something else that we had did old drum, you know. There's a million different ways you, you can do it, and then uh, you know we'll build on that. Yeah, yeah. And do yeah. are these usually like ideas that, like, say for example, you're out with a Monster Magnet for a little while, and something that doesn't necessarily apply to Monster Magnet, you're like, hey, this would work really good with Atomic Bitch Wax. No, no, that really doesn't. You would think, but no, that doesn't really. Uh, they don't really cross uh, contaminate each other at all. It's completely different with magnet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a complete different thing. That's you know that's Dave's baby. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you guys. That I think that's what sets you guys apart is your your commitment to the the seventies rock rift. You know that. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's that's what we grew up on. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, what kind of what like did do you go really deep into the seventies stuff? I find sometimes when. I talk to people who are influenced by the seventies music. I, I, I sometimes go a little too deep for their taste, and that's not me trying to be toot my own horn. It's just, I, I've always dug that era because that's when I was born. And that was sort of the stuff I grew up on, you know, stuff like, um, 
you know, like Buffalo and Leaf Hound. And, sure, you know. yeah, exactly. And I'm in the same boat with you. Yeah, because, well, the thing is, why you wind to me anyway, for me, why I wind up going so deep is because I'm looking for something new, but I'm not looking for anything new. <laughs> right. <laughs> I want it to be new to me. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I find like, that stuff fascinating. Yeah, and there's so much of it, you know. And uh, so that's really, to me, the reason for it. It's like it's like discovering a new album that's been around for 40 years, yeah. 45 years. And it's it's great for me. Yeah. Brand new thing. You know, I really, I'm not, I really don't like much brand new, you know, metal. Or, I'm not really into it. You know, I kind of, I kind of, I, kind of, I burned out on it. You mm. know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that, that's an old, you know, idea that sometimes in order to push things forward, you have to go backwards a little bit. Yeah. Really. You know, and then it's fun, uh, uh, recreating that stuff too and trying to capture that moment and, and that vibe. Actually, at the moment, uh, Magnet, we're, we're recording a, a, an album of covers. Oh, really? Like what kind? Really deep, man. Really deep. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll love it. Oh, okay. love I'm it. I'm looking forward to that. I love that like kind Buffalo of stuff. Buffalo and Lee found, and you're going to love it. <laughs> we're going <laughs> We're going crazy deep. It's going to seem, to a lot of people, it's going to seem like original stuff, but, you know, because they don't, they're not going to know it. <laughs> oh, you I love I mean? that. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's that's like you guys are going into the uh, the like a, a flea market bin and finding something so rare and you're like, Oh, this will fuck with people's heads. Definitely. Yeah. That's exactly what it is too. It's great. So is there anything that you've discovered recently? That's a, like a, a real, you know, cool deep cut that you feel like people don't know about? Uh, well, I mean, uh, you know, I don't know how deep it is. It's not that deep to me, but maybe to a lot of people, you know, the band dust, D U S T dust. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're doing a cover of, uh, of uh learning to die oh that's awesome yeah yeah great for drums i'm the drummer so it's really fun for drums but, you know. <laughs> yeah i feel like when people talk about dust the one that the two things always seem to come up is that uh one of the members was um he was one of the ramones i forget which yeah, one. yeah mark mark bell yeah which is mark mark ramones yeah, yeah yeah that he was in the band and everyone seems to if they get that far into it they know the song the ballad i've been thinking and right. that yeah, yeah and yeah. i'm always like no but that's not that's not the good stuff that's like no. uh, that's like the don't fear the reaper of their catalog you know right which is like what do you, you know i don't even want to hear that <laughs> <laughs> that's all, yeah i want to hear uh you know dominance and submission <laughs> right yeah <laughs> now see i got into a conversation not long ago it was about two years ago with this uh they're a cool band they're called black coffee and they're they're just sort of a younger band and they're getting into the 70s stuff and when i started rattling off these names uh, th- they gave me a look and i was like oh shit i'm sorry you know i'll let you you f- i'll let you find that on your own you know right right, right. <laughs> totally yep. i don't i don't want to scare you with the <laughs> with some of the yeah. stuff that's out there but you're going to love it you know yeah well changing gears a little bit let me get back to the album i uh, the the album's called scorpio and right. the um I, and the end of it has a the the war pigs riff the dun, 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 there at the very end <laughs> yeah of course and so why why did you guys attach that on there was that just as a goof you know what we were tracking the guitars and we were uh, working out the leads and you know garrett had just kind of it, it 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 was just it's tongue in cheek, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. It's just an it's an ode to Iomi, you know. Right. And uh, and he was just looking for you know searching around for something to play it. You know, we were just working it out, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, he just did that by accident, or just you know out of just fucking around. And I was like, yeah, do that. That's definitely that's great. It's <laughs> hilarious, you know. Of course. Yeah, it's yeah. never a bad time to salute Sabbath. Right, I mean, it was just, you know, it's tongue-in-cheek, and we were just having fun. Yeah, yeah. And, uh... <laughs> well, the, uh, really... well, a lot of the stuff that you guys I've noticed over the years, you do have a lot of astrology-themed lyrics. Uh, maybe I shouldn't even say a lot, but it, it comes up frequently, I feel like, in, in your catalog. Like the song, uh, Sometime Wednesday from uh, Tab oh 4. God. 
you know, I you guys have, like, was it Cancer's Calling because Leo died? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- that, that's a pervasive yeah. theme. So uh, what's going on with the, the astrology themes for you guys? You know, I don't think there's a whole lot of thought put into it, man. It's just, <laughs> it just, it just sounds cool, you know, <laughs> and, it, and it's a good visual, you know. Mm hmm. Yeah, I don't it, think there's a whole lot of uh, deep thought put into it. <laughs> you know, pretty straight ahead. Okay, stuff. So, all right. Yeah. Well, I was I was wondering because it just it you know, and obviously the new album is called Scorpio, and so yep. yeah. So, well, tell me about that song. You know, tell me what you know some of the themes behind that. Is there any uh, overlying idea behind the song Scorpio? Not really. No, <laughs> I, wish I, I wish I had a cool story for you, but no, not really. It's just a you know, good rock and roll song, you know. And uh, and um, you know, you just go with what rhymes and sounds cool. <laughs> you, know, you know, that's the most honest answer I think I've gotten from somebody in a long time. I mean, that's what it is. It's not like you know we're uh, uh, you know Rush or something putting all these you know big deep stories. You know, we're just a rock and roll band, really. <laughs> Yeah. And see, what's funny is your honesty is actually thwarting my my idea that I was going to somehow segue this into a spiritual thing because that's generally what I talk about on the nah, podcast. Nah, and so, yeah, we're not that spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just like to play, man. I mean, it's that simple. We get into a room and we just try to look. Let's see how far we can push this till the whole riff falls apart. You know. <laughs> well, you know, I, I admire that. I mean, that's what we try to do. We try to outdo each other, and like, and to the point where it just comes apart. Like, all right, well, there's the line in the sand. We can't really do any better than that, you know. <laughs> and uh, and it's it's more of a sport, you know. Mm-hmm. Right, and, uh, just to see who know. can kind of out riff each other, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's, and it's just fun. Hmm. <laughs> Well, you know, that's and, and that's really important for a, a band like you guys. Is you know, you. you the, the idea that if you started making, I guess, really deep and thought-provoking lyrics, that might kind of fuck up your band fan base a little bit. Yeah, we don't we, we don't go that deep. <laughs> That's all right, man. I mean, you know, you know, a lot of the songs are about you know breakup songs, you know, about old girlfriends, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh, is that There's what a- um, "Hope You Die" is about? Yeah, that's a breakup song. I thought so. I'm so glad to know that because that, that was mm-hmm. a, that was an awesome song to listen to. Just, just like I hope you die. I was like, yeah, I've had a couple of girlfriends. I've wished that on. Oh, totally. Of course, we all do. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I tried to explain that one uh, to my wife, and she's just kind of like, yeah, I don't think I like that song. <laughs> yeah, a, li- what, a little too close to home, baby. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, it could be. It could be just like, ah, oh, shit, I might be the, uh, the, the the target of that vitriol from some guy out there. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, the main, the main thing we try to do is just have fun. And that's really, it. you know, we're a rock and roll band. We try to have a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's you been know. the theme of your catalog, it seems like, for, you know, since the inception. Yeah. And we like to play fast. You know, I, I love that the album is so short. I love that. I like, you know, but it. From the time you leave your house to the time you get to your job, the album's over. Yeah, yeah. Just enough time to get to work, you know, for a lot <laughs> yeah. of people. <laughs> well, for me, it was actually, a, this past week, it's been a really good uh, soundtrack for my jog. My jog is about, you know, half an hour long, and it, it's almost timed perfectly. So I've been Perfect. listening to it. Yeah. And, and, right. and honestly, the, the upbeat tempo is really good for exercise. You You kind of feel like you're going into battle a little bit. Yeah, and it's kind of like you know, you like you want you find yourself driving a little faster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when I listen to it, I, I same thing happens to me because I've listened to it two thousand times, analyzing it. You know, mm-hmm. all of a sudden I'm doing you know I'm doing seventy and a forty. <laughs> <laughs> Be hard to explain that to the cop when he pulls you over. It's just like, yeah. look, I'm just listening to my album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, the album actually has a, a few just strictly um, musical tracks with no with no vocals whatsoever. And is, is that something that you guys do consciously? Like we don't want vocals on this, or does it just happen? You know, as you're progressing through the song. No, we. It's definitely uh, on purpose. Yeah, it's it's a conscious decision. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, we usually do about three instrumentals on an album. 
Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, and just to, just to totally go off. Don't worry about the freaking lyrics or vocals and none of that. Just play. Mm-hmm. And have fun, yeah. And just see how far we can push it and make it more about the instruments, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and a lot of the times, yeah. I, I think a lot of people don't recognize that a song without vocals can be just as catchy as one with vocals. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Like there's, yeah. I, I think of the band um, Pelican. You know, they don't have any vocals whatsoever on any of their songs. And it's, yeah, you, you find yourself singing the riffs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I do that with you guys too. It's, a, it, it's one of those things I, I almost recognize the riffs more than I do the vocals. Right. And that's, you know, that's definitely on purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Does that help when you're playing live shows? Oh, definitely, because it saves, the, you know, the vocalist. Right. From, uh, you know what I mean? It gives you a little more life. To, uh, you know, the, the show could be a little longer. Mm-hmm. You know, and we're not exactly all, you know, 16 years old either. So, <laughs> <laughs> you just, but it's always been like that. It really has nothing to do with that. It's just because it's fun and you can go off. And you don't have to worry about hearing yourself singing. You know, you could just fucking play. Mm-hmm. Now, how have you guys been doing since this pandemic has started? You know, there's no really been no live shows whatsoever. Are you chomping at the bit to get back out there? It's been horrible. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've lost so many tours. And, uh, <clears throat> I mean, of course, it could be worse. But uh, at least uh, we have an album coming out. There's stuff to do. But it's it's kind of tough not being able to promote it properly by touring on it, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's a bit. I think it's been a beast for a lot of bands. It's horrible. It's really brutal. I mean, it's it's very depressing for us, it, you know. And we're all used to, you know, between Magnet and Bitch Bash, we're used to touring a lot, you know. And I've never been home this much in my life, and I fucking hate it. <laughs> right. Yeah. I I feel like I want to just get in my car and go anywhere. Mm-hmm. and not come back for a month right you know a fishing trip anything you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. <laughs> i know I've, I've been i've been the same way it's it's it, it yeah it, it drives you crazy i've been hearing you know stories about you know people just completely losing their minds because you know staying home sounded really cool about a year ago <laughs> yeah right i'm over it yeah yeah only I'm so much netflix you can watch and uh i mean i really I don't really see any end in sight to this bullshit. So, I, and I, I don't know what to think. Uh, and, the, you know, at least right now it's summer and you could kind of have a sort of a life. But as soon as the winter time comes, boy, it's going to be really tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, have you guys thought of any of the, you know, there are some bands who are doing this, you know, social distancing concerts and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Have you guys entertained the possibility of doing something like that? Hate the idea. Hate mm-hmm. it. Yeah, don't, don't even want to do it. I'd rather just wait, right, and do it and do it right, and have people be able to climb on top of each other like they used to. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah it it almost really, doesn't seem right unless there's some sort of a pit involved. Yeah, that's what I mean. If people can't, you know, it's a group thing. It's not just us and them. That seems very separate. It's it's you know when we play a show, it's like all of us in a room together, the audience and us. We're all one thing. You know. Hmm. And without that interaction, uh, you know, the energy level just goes down to, not, you know, negative 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I know so, a big part of it for, you know, a lot of bands, especially you guys, is you, a lot of the times, you know, before and after the show, you guys go out and interact with people and just chat them up and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a party, you know. It's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're having to stand six feet away from each other, that seems kind of like a, I don't know, an asylum type of a situation it's, it's just bizarre you know and i understand it i get it but it's just i don't think it's right to rock and roll <laughs> it makes right. it just doesn't yeah it doesn't have, you know so i don't know <laughs> ask me in another six months how i feel about it right <laughs> I, I miss playing out but you know if that's if those are the circumstances mm-hmm. well you know maybe there's a silver lining to that the idea that you know you're releasing an album now and say six months from now they've got a vaccine and and then you get to play it like it's brand new again. You know, maybe that would be some sort of revitalization. I hope so. That would be great. You yeah. Know? I, I would love that. You know, I, I my fear is uh, that the album is just going to get lost in the wind because you can't really tour on it. And by the time, I'm hoping this doesn't happen, but I think it probably will. By the time you're able to tour for real again, it's going to be time for a new album. And it's like, 
this one just got lost in the you know this one just got lost at sea yeah yeah and that that would be frustrating say i i'm not really a i'm a shitty musician so i i can't say for sure but i would imagine that if you're putting this much sweat into an album and the idea of it being referred to as the lost album that just seems like that that would be a bitch it's a real it's a real bummer yeah yeah, I mean, we put a lot into it. We put a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of money, you know, put a lot into it. And mm-hmm. it just seems like, you know, but I don't know. Only time can tell. I have no idea. Yeah. I no, mean, I, I, at this point, I try not to even think about it because there's nothing I could do. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe yeah. maybe it'll be one of those really cool things that, you know, like, again, going back to Sleep's Jerusalem, you know, maybe it'll become one of those albums that's, you know, reckoned for eternity. <laughs> That'd be cool. I'll be into that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Right. Well, yeah. man, I I hope the best for you guys. I'm 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 glad to hear new Atomic Bitch Wax. I've loved you guys since 2000. I, I bumped into your album when I was going through a, a record store in New York City on vacation one time, and uh, I've been uh, been into you ever since. So you've you've got one very solid fan in the middle of nowhere and in north carolina so i will do my best to promote you you. thank you very much i really appreciate it man yeah bob no problem well i will uh well i'll let you go and uh good luck with everything and um oh uh let me make sure i'm pronouncing your last name right uh bob pantella 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 okay all right so when i it's like pan it's like pantera but instead of an r it's two l's Oh, awesome! Oh, well, that's that's very metal. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Well, cool, bro. Well, I appreciate it. And, um, and are you cool with me uh, using a couple of tunes off of uh, Scorpio to uh, put uh, publish this in a couple of weeks? Go for it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Well, I appreciate it. And um, all right, man. Well, if there's anything else you uh, you know need to add, or if you feel like you need to add, you can let me know. Just text me at this number, um, or call me either way, and uh, I'll uh, email John and let him know when the the uh, the episode goes live, and uh, we'll just uh, go from there and hope for the best. I appreciate you uh, taking a few minutes with me, man. All right, you got it, dude. Thank you, man. All right, Bob. Take care, brother. Take care, man. All right. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.
that's going to do it for this episode of the Rock God Podcast. I want to thank Bob for taking a few minutes to talk to us about his thoughts and ideas about their new album, Scorpio. Make sure to go to the atomicbitchwax.bandcamp.com for any of their other releases, including Scorpio. Also, make sure to check out their Facebook page and also go to tprecords.com. For us, if you want to check out our socials, go to Facebook at Heavy Vinyl and Cassettes. On Twitter, we're at Vinyl Heavy. And Instagram, at Heavy Vinyl Records. Also, make sure you go to heavy-vinyl.com to check out any of the records and cassettes that we have available. Especially right now, we just now got a few pre-order copies of the new Sleeps Dope Smoker on picture disc and black vinyl. So if you want a copy of that, go ahead and snatch one up. Anyway, thanks for taking the time to listen to the episode. And until next time, God bless. <laughs>